In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a big look at the tropics, as you can see on screen, as well as the upcoming pattern as a whole. And from yesterday's video, we have seen some pretty significant changes with the upcoming pattern. Uh, a little bit more optimism for precipitation down the road in a lot of areas in the central and eastern states that really, really need it. And also, a little bit of an early signal from the models that we could be seeing colder air return to the central and eastern states with a little bit of a warm up in the west towards the very tail end of the model runs. And I would really urge you to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, we do see these pan out sometimes and we do see them fall through sometimes. Keep that information as mind, in mind as we kind of go over it. The most previous one that we went over did fall through, so I don't know if that's kind of a trend now with the models that were kind of in a tricky period and they're going to fail a little bit more than typical, or if this is a legitimate signal. There's no way for me to be able to tell you that, but I'm going to show you the information either way and we'll see if it's right or wrong once we get there. Let's take a look at the tropics first off, though, and we have just tons of areas of potential development. And we even have Tropical Storm Gabrielle uh, here in the Atlantic. Uh, and this one looks to be a classic kind of out-the-sea hurricane. It's a tropical storm right now. It is expected to reach Category 1 and eventually Category 2 hurricane status out there way in the middle of the Atlantic. Thankfully, this one looks to be a non-threat for the United States or Canada. Uh, we do have one other threat area in the Atlantic. Uh, funny enough, it's kind of originating in a similar area to where the original tropical low formed for Gabrielle. And this one sits at a 0% chance of formation over the next two days, as well as a 20% chance over the next seven. So obviously they expect this one to develop over time. Uh, you know, not necessarily that they expect it to develop, but if it does, they expect that to take some time. Uh, we could see this probability go up if it is expected to develop, and it could just, you know, fizzle out eventually. We do have a couple of higher risk areas to the west of Mexico there, and one is a 30% chance over the next two days, as well as a 70% chance over the next seven days, which is considered high risk for development. And then we also have this area here with a 40% chance of development across the board. When you see the two-day outlook, the same percentage as the seven-day outlook, that's kind of a sign uh, that they do expect development over the next two days if it's going to develop at all. Uh, if it's larger over the seven-day period than the two-day period, then they do expect it to happen sometime after the two-day period, typically. Now, uh, with our kind of model guidance on screen, we can see that this system out here, the next one after Gabrielle, uh, does develop on this GFS model. This is right around the 25th, so six days from now, we see kind of a tropical low trying to form there just to the east of the Eastern Caribbean. And as we just continue letting this play out, it does impact some of these islands uh, like St. Martin, the Virgin Islands, and it gets pretty close to pretty much hitting Puerto Rico there. Uh, and then we see a lot of this activity sitting near the Bahamas, uh, two areas kind of distinct from one another, one here closer to the Bahamas, one here near Haiti and Dominican Republic. Uh, so a lot of potential for development down the road here. This is September 29th. And what we see is it eventually gets pretty close to Florida, one sitting right there off of Miami. Again, two distinguishable areas here, one well out the sea, one there a lot closer to areas in between the Bahamas and Miami. Uh, but what we're going to see is that this is, again, by September 30th, by the way, is they both are going to want to kind of curve away uh, so I'm going to put this in white so we can see it. But they both kind of are going to want to just get rejected away from the eastern states. They're going to get really close on this model run, but they do kind of just defer away. Uh, so interesting to see. I wouldn't rule out any impacts for the United States or really anywhere at this point. The storm isn't even close to developing yet. So obviously the models get a lot better with the information once we actually have data to go off of like an actual storm that's developing. Uh, you start to get an idea, and as we get closer, because this is very far out, uh, this is about maybe 13, 14 days away, uh, you start to talk about the steering patterns and, you know, the troughs and the ridges and the highs and the lows. Those things are a lot more evident, and we know exactly where they're going to be once we get a whole lot closer. So when it's in the long range, you have a lot of these factors that aren't sure things, and that's why we can get huge variables like this curving out the sea could turn into this thing, you know, heading into the Gulf or heading uh, closer to the East Coast or not even making it to the Bahamas. It could just curve out the sea way ahead of that. So there's a lot of variables that 
happen when we're talking about a tropical system so far out. But we're going to track this every day and kind of go over it with you guys. Um, we'll get to the bottom of it. We're going to go ahead and talk about the Climate Prediction Center outlooks as well as the model guidance here uh, and just kind of move into that. First things first, the 6 to 10 day outlook. This one is from yesterday. I'm recording a little early today, but overall warmth from coast to coast. Oh, I got to switch it back to black because we can't see. Uh, here we go. So again, we talked about this yesterday. The coolest area, which is really just near normal, would be kind of in the central southern plains there. Everywhere else, pretty much warm across the board. 8 to 14 day outlook for September 26th through October 2nd is very similar. We do see the west coast being the coolest or nearest to the normal area and then pretty much warmth from the Rockies eastward here from the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, again, we're going to show you some model guidance that does pull us back into the colder direction down the road, so we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. But let's go over the past 20 days. Uh, this is the final day of August and then the first 19 days of September. And we still, through the 19th of September here, seeing a primarily uh, warmer pattern out west and then a cooler pattern that's ensued because of that, what we call positive PNA out west, that warmer air. It's called a positive PNA, and that forces cooler air down into the central and eastern states. And we've seen that, uh, especially through that first week of September. If we remain colder or warmer through the end of September, we expect to see this kind of flipping in a way. We might stick with some blue in the east by the end of it. We might stick with some yellows in the west, but this is going to get watered down if we continue to see the opposite of this uh, through the end of the month. Of, of course, this is your first two-thirds of September that we're looking at, and we only have one more third to go. So you have to take that into consideration. Uh, there's not a whole lot of time. It might be able to flip it, but it's going to take a lot uh, because, again, two to one. Looking at the overall storminess, again, we're going to be in a quite boring pattern for the short term. Uh, to medium term we see parts of the northern plains and upper midwest as well as the southwest seeing precipitation today but relatively inactive along the united states by tomorrow on saturday the 20th i mean pretty much the same thing midwest plains a uh, little bit of the four corner states there sunday here on the 21st we see more of the northwest into the rocky seeing activity and we do start to see overall activity picking up for the west and the central states as a whole but the east is still relatively dry here by the end of this weekend Looking towards Monday on the 22nd, we do see a lot of, again, the Rockies, the Plains, the Midwest, now the Ohio Valley and parts of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast getting some. So this is an improvement by Tuesday on the 23rd. Now we're fully seeing a showery pattern in the Mid-Atlantic, Northeast Ohio Valley. I know you'd like to see pretty much everywhere getting involved here. So there is some people being excluded so far. But this is really good news. We need any precipitation we can get in some of these areas. Uh, the Deep South really needs it as well. So we're going to be watching for that throughout the model run. Let's take a look at Wednesday and we see the Deep South thing. It just mentioned it. But we do see the Deep South getting kind of saturated with some precipitation by Wednesday. It's also important to note the Northeast averages less precipitation than the Deep South. So the Northeast could rebound a lot easier than the Deep South could. The Deep South needs a lot to reach their average, whereas the Northeast is a whole lot less. Looking towards Thursday here on the 25th, uh, we have a very broad low across kind of the Mississippi River area. A little bit of a cold front type feature there, maybe a warm front happening up there. This could feature, we were talking about this yesterday, some severe weather across the deep south and southeast, at least thunderstorm activity for Thursday the 25th here. Friday the 26th, that moves more into the southeast Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic areas. And then by Saturday the 27th, again, more much-needed precipitation along the eastern seaboard, more specifically the mid-Atlantic and northeast happening here by Saturday on the 27th. As we move towards Sunday the 28th, some of the remnants are still around with some showery activity, but that is overall slowing down. Monday here on the 29th, the deep south gets more. So again, good news. I mean, we're seeing good news here. A tropical low comes onto screen here, just to the west of the Bahamas there, uh, by Monday the 29th, which is about 11 days from now, uh, quite a ways out. Tuesday on the 30th, that is over the Bahamas and actually developing uh, probably a tropical storm on this frame, according to this model. So definitely something to watch for. Both models bringing this thing very close to the southeast area, definitely concerning, at least the Caribbean uh, we do see the Ohio Valley deep south, southeast by this 
uh, Tuesday, the, what was it, 31st, 30th? I forget when September ends, 30th, here seeing precipitation. Also, worth noting, a low moving between Hudson Bay and Great Lakes. We watch for this a lot of times when a low moves into this area, we see cooler air follow into the central and eastern states, and we can see this low has the warm front and has a cold front feature, so that's looking promising. Wednesday the 1st, more good news. Tons of precipitation for the deep south, mid-Atlantic, and northeast. If you guys watched yesterday's video, this is highly improved for a lot of these areas, I should say. This tropical low deepening in pressure pretty significantly. I can't tell if that's a 996 or 986. Regardless, it's strengthening. Uh, 986 would be really strengthening. And it's passing between southern Florida and Cuba there. Wednesday, the 1st of October. Thursday, the 2nd. That low might be a 963 on this model run. It's really hard to see with all the colors going on. Just on the uh, east or western tip of Cuba there. Uh, now that I'm mentioning it, I think I earlier in the video said west of the Bahamas when it was really east of the Bahamas. So I don't know why I get that so mixed up when we're talking about the tropics all the time. But forgive me. By this point, it's pretty evident we do have a ridge along the west coast and a little bit of a trough going on for the central and eastern states. This is kind of that promising, more fall-like weather that I've been talking about uh, throughout the video. Models are kind of starting to suggest as of today. Friday the 3rd is very similar. Very intense tropical low. I think that says 943, so we're getting into crazy land here. Keep in mind, this is very far out, take it with a grain of salt, especially the track, but also just this crazy intensity. Uh, should be really, really hesitant to believe this as, like, complete truth. Uh, we're watching for trends here. We have one model, the GFS, brings this thing in and rejects it back out to sea. The European model brings it really close to the same area and then meanders its way into the Gulf here. So, uh, regardless, the big takeaway is both major models do have this thing coming really close to the United States, which is not what you want to see in the long range. The model one actually ends right there, but I would dare say this thing starts to move a little northward there at the end. Bad sign, but again, thankfully it's extremely far out at this point. Looking at the total precipitation, this is vastly improved, like we mentioned, from yesterday. A lot of the plains, lower Midwest, deep south, Ohio Valley and southeast, northeast and mid-Atlantic, all these areas look greater uh, as far as amounts than they did yesterday, in my opinion. So this is really, really tremendous news looking at the anomalies we're seeing a lot more light greens and light browns indicating more near normal precipitation unless you're in far northern new england or northeast here in the deep south even looking closer to normal with a lot of above normal precipitation for some of these areas in here so this is just really good news here looking at the temperatures on the european model uh, we're going to take a look here uh we definitely see both of these models showing a similar idea so keep that in mind as we go through but we're going to see this overall warm-up happen and it doesn't take place fully until we're reaching early next week that's when we see fully oranges and reds popping up in the east like we can see here uh even some blues do work their ways in it its way in at times and then we get this low uh, and the reason why we can tell this is where when the low is here is because there's clearly a cold front clearly a warm front feature you get the warm air rushing up the eastern states here, very classic, but that cooler air is trailing in right behind. Uh, and the way we can tell that this has a high likelihood in this case to move into the eastern states and continue to traverse further and further south and east is because we get this warm push up the west, uh, which is going to help to just create the correct balance that needs to take place for cooler air to move into the east. Again, all of this is very typical of a low moving between the Great Lakes and Hudson Bay. And we see fully cool air. This is by the end of the model run. Really rich cool air. It's stretching pretty flat from the Rockies, through the Plains, through the Midwest and Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, all the way to the East Coast. Oftentimes when they're longer like this, they're not as, uh, not as far reaching as far as the South uh, because it's elongated. Uh, you want a more, I would say narrow cooldown for it to reach further and deeper to the south anyway that's details that are not important when we're looking at hours 360 but the big feature here is pretty rich warmth along the west of north america which again is that positive pna feature which does support stuff like this so this is 
a pretty promising sign considering the range that we're at. This is about as promising as it can get for a potential early October pattern change. We'll be watching for that very closely. Again, the GFS model, we're going to see pretty similar things. We warm up overall. Uh, we continue to see that, and then a low moves through, and we end up seeing that really rich cold air. In this case, not as flat. It's actually a lot deeper reaching towards the Gulf Coast. So definitely, uh, again, two different oriented cooldowns, but pretty similar outlooks considering how far out this is. So again, early October, we're now putting that on alert for a potential pattern change. We will see. We'll go over it every day, just like we will with the tropics, and we will get to the bottom of it together. So be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.